We're also going to talk about Elizabeth Smart. So do you want to? Sure. So Elizabeth Smart, I don't know if you guys remember, but a, a while ago she was the young girl who got kidnapped and was actually found and returned to her family. She's much older now. I think maybe like in her 20s or maybe even 30. And she's recently be, she's recently started doing like a press thing. She did an article with People where she said that porn made her life a living, like it made her life worse than without the porn in her situation. And I was surprised by this, and then I was talking to you about it, and you were telling me, like, oh, there's a little background that you don't know about, so you can share that with us. Mm. But I was like, what? So I read the article, and she just kind of, like, talks about how, like, oh, before, before like, he would have sex with me sometimes, he'd watch porn, and then he would see what's on the porn and ask Wait, me. Wait, he had sex with her? I, mean, I, didn't, I had her? no idea he, she was raped either. I did not know she was raped. Oh, she said that? I mean, she was raped by him. I... I didn't know that. I did not know she was raped by him either. I thought they just kidnapped her and they treated her well kind of thing. and Not well, but I thought they like kept her around. But I, I did not know she was raped. She says that before he would have sex with her or rape her, he would watch porn first sometimes and then point to her and be like, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Oh so he was kind of like using porn as like creativity for his rapes almost. What a disgusting person. And she says, she also says, like, I'm not saying that porn is, the, is a cause of kidnapping and you like get rid of all porn and there'll be no kidnapping. But she's saying that porn just made her life worse. And I was telling you, I was like, I'm surprised this is like news because I didn't realize that porn was that big of a topic and I guess this happens with kidnapping, but you were telling me about a little bit of background on like the porn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, about that, I honestly didn't, I'd never read that she was raped mm -hmm. before. I didn't know until I read as well, but maybe it's because I was much younger when she was kidnapped. Huh. Um, so there's been a recent push in the Republican Party to actually ban pornography. Um, both parties come out with like a list of agendas and things that they want to accomplish, like for the Republicans, rebanning abortion and um, things like that. Um, and one of their initiatives was to get rid of porn because they see it as one of the uh, biggest menaces to society. It's funny because some of the people that are pushing for this ban have been known to have mistresses haven't been known to have their mistresses have abortions. So I, I think the people that they're picking to have this moral high ground, maybe they should reconsider. And secondly, um, someone questioned, you know, whether they feel like porn is worse than mass incarceration in America. And they were like, absolutely. Like they feel like pornography is the, uh, what's the word? I guess the, the catalyst for the degradation of America. And people are like, well, isn't putting like an entire, almost an entire group of people behind bars, like worse you know, in that sense, of course. So, but you know, but I'm, I'm wondering how they got to porn. Like, why uh, is this them being on a moral? Is this them trying to garner the evangelical vote? Yeah, you know? they're not going anywhere. It's not like they're going to vote Democrat. No, so I don't see why they're pursuing this. Um, I don't know. I just think they're lo they're lost. They're I, lost in their the agendas they want to pursue. I'm kind of surprised that they would go after the porn industry. Yeah, it's a big money making industry. It's a huge money making industry. And from what I've been told by a lot of Republicans, a lot of the reasons for being a Republican is finance. Mm. So I'm surprised they would go after such a huge money industry who probably donates to them and stuff. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. Yeah, I don't understand honestly why they they've chosen this because. You know, anytime you come up with a platform, there's a lot of back and forth, backdoor talk right here in our hometown in D.C. And, um, for instance, if they want to come up with certain slogans to use in their political platforms, like, um, uh, okay, so when they used to talk about, or they still do, talk about people that go on welfare, welfare, they used to just blatantly say, like, black people. And then it graduated into thugs and welfare queens. And now it's the takers. And that language is actually something that's deliberately cultivated. They come up with, like, catchphrases. And, like, mm. any Republican or any Democrat, whatever, you have to use a certain terminology when you're talking about this topic. And you hammer it in over and over and over again to the media. That permeates to the public. So then you talk to the average layperson who votes for that party. And they use the same terminology because they're watching the Fox News and the AM radio shows and stuff like that. They don't even know where their vernacular has come from. They don't recognize, like, that propaganda in their speech. So, I actually heard Mark Lamont Hill say something of that nature. He was saying how, like, Fox is extremely organized. Oh, yes. He said that every morning they get together and they have, like, a conversation, like a meeting. And they, not only do they have this meeting, but they kind of, like, say, like, let's say me and her have two different opinions on one situation. 
But we are going to go and present a united front right. to the people. So I might can sway you a little bit more on my side, I can, or you can sway me, me more on your side. Yeah. But to, in front of the people, we look like we're together. We're unit, yeah. So they're giving one message to the people. And they'll often bring on a commentator who's against them, but it'll still be like two strong people who already have their arguments ready yeah. because they've talked already for an hour. So yeah. you're like, oh, just say this if someone asks you that, I'll say this. Right. And so all you see is like this very strong argument against whatever someone else is saying. Yeah. And on top of that, they just replay this three times a day. They do. So these two people will still be on there with different commentators. No one's going to sound better than them because you guys have already discussed it. You've rigged it. Like, you've already discussed it. Yeah. You already gave each other points to it's make. It's not an organic conversation. Right. It's not a conversation, period. It's it's uh, like a propaganda piece, really. right? And something I also heard that they do on Fox News is, and I've seen it done before, the person, if they have a really strong argument against the Fox News commentator, sometimes they'll mute their mic. So you can't even hear them talking anymore. And if they pan to the main uh, Fox News commenter, you can't hear the other person. They may still be talking, but they're muted now. Wow. So it's such... That is it strategic. Is, it is so funny. He says that he actually said he wished like other news stations did that. Absolutely. If, especially if they're going to be biased. It's one thing to yeah. be biased and just be biased. Another thing to be biased and have like a, like a strategy. Yeah. Like that is so clever. People yeah. don't catch on to that because it was like... I didn't realize that they were playing the same show with just different people coming on like three, four times yeah. a day. Oh, I didn't realize that at first. Here's the Fox News formula in a nutshell. You could be a... It doesn't matter what the topic is. It could be holiday cooking, like the best meals for Christmas. But somehow it'll be some agenda to talk about black people in poverty, uh, race relations, and how black people need to do better and stop wearing low pants or some crazy thing like that. Or where are the fathers, you know? And they will have a black person on there. They will usually ambush them. They could be like a cook, you know, that comes on the show, a chef with their recipes. I've seen this before. And they'll be like, okay, well, tell me how you feel about black fathers. And blah, blah. And they're like, what? So you're not prepared for that question. Right. But they are, because oh, they talked already. Or they'll have it where, um, so that's the ambush style. The other styles, they'll talk about a race issue. And they will have a black person on there that agrees with the conservative white perspective because they feel like if we have somebody that looks like that demographic saying the same things that we do, it's not yeah. racist anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, I Stacey wonder Dash, Stacey Dash, all of them, all of those people that are work. For, I wonder what Stacey Fox. Dash check look like. I was gonna say that. Like, I really want to know how what, much money she's is, making. What is the check amount? What's that the going? Would, what's the going rate for selling out for your sell, people? Exactly. What's the going rate? I want to know. Million, two million? I don't know. Why should be something low like? Fifteen hundred. Well, I want to be like fifteen hundred. I want to be like loving hip hop and yeah. prices. Absolutely, it's a shame. But you did ask me something. If I knew for sure she was raped, I just want to read this out. Okay. In the article, she said it just led to him raping me more, more than he already did, which was a lot. That's horrible. So that's just the porn thing. I I don't want to divert from her because I think her experience is horrible. Oh no, no I just want to say that because I wasn't sure if our listeners were like. Oh no, no. But this is raped. this is something else. So, I. Uh, Hmm. I have mixed emotions about the Elizabeth Smart case because what bothered me was at the same time that she was abducted, there was a little black girl that was abducted and barely made the news. Oh. And this girl, like Elizabeth Smart, I think she was only a few miles away from her house. Yeah. And this little black girl who was much younger, like maybe six or something like that, was like abducted hundreds of miles away from her home. Or not, she was abduct abducted around her home, but, you know, moved somewhere else. And she managed to, in the same day, chew her way out of her restraints. How old was she? Six, I think six or seven. Wow. There was like no major like news channel push to like have people looking for her. It was just her family and friends. Wow. They couldn't really get the resources like Elizabeth Smart's family. And she, but she found a way, she got away and she found a place where she could call home and say what happened. They didn't even talk about wow. that at, at all. six years old. It was old. insane. And That's it, incredible. It always bothered me that like, uh, I don't know if this is a song line, but it's like, there are no Amber Alerts for Amber Skin Girls. Oh, wow. And I like that. I feel like that's the truth. Like, if we have kids one day, they're going to be brown. And if anything were to happen to them, I feel like they would be lost. Like, I feel like I would never find them again if they were abducted. I don't think, unless I had some kind of political clout or financial yeah. means to get my kid's story onto the media, that it would even make a splash for more than the evening news. So it just, that... And then watching Elizabeth Smart day after day, everybody knows. Yeah, who everybody she is. knows who she is. She's almost not a. Ce I mean, she's not a celebrity, but she's a well-known person. So yeah. it just it, it always bothered me. But I mean, that is sad. But I actually wonder what the numbers for abductions are like for if you look at the breakdown for skin color. Only because maybe they're just not that many people of color being abducted. I know as a kid, my dad was like, "Nobody wants you. You're a black girl. Don't nobody want you." Uh, I don't know about that. I think actually, I, I would be curious to look that up. I think it would be more advantageous because if you have that proclivity to abducting kids, who better to abduct than some black kid or some poor Hispanic kid or, you know, someone of that demographic yeah. because they know like the, 
the cops are not going to be on your tail like that. You're not going to be sweated like that. That kid is not going to be missed by anybody. But no, no, I was just saying like media coverage wise, because you're saying there's not that much media coverage for people of color. And you think it's because of the loan? No, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. It would, it would speak even more to what you're saying if yeah. it is about 50 50 or even more blacks being adopted versus whites. I'm I mean, we have to look at it percentage yeah. wise, not numbers wise. Yeah, let's say 50 percent. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you look at it, you're fine. Like, oh my gosh, there were 300 kids that are abducted, and out of that, 80 percent of them were black. But that okay. would that would strike me as. Do, is there? Do you know a, a, a black or Hispanic version of a, an Elizabeth Smart? Like right off the top of your head. To be honest, I didn't know who Elizabeth Smart was until I saw this article. Oh wow. Well, I honest. did. But it, it goes without saying, I don't. But I was a kid when she was abducted. I was me like, too. I mean, I I remember her though, but I don't. I've never heard of any other kid getting that kind of coverage like she did. I mean, I remember John Benet Ramsey. Remember her? She was the beauty, little beauty queen girl who was killed. You don't remember that? How old were we? We were, we were kids too. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, yeah I wasn't paying attention you to news when I was like nine. Oh, I, I did. I, I, no. I didn't have a choice. No, I wasn't. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, if something happens now, then I would probably remember, but not when I was like eight or nine. So basically, we, we talked about this. Um, you know, why, why was this a story? Elizabeth Smart talking about watching porn and how porn was so detrimental to her life or viewing it at such a young age. And I was saying I felt like that was because of the recent coverage talking about the Republican Party's new platform to um, push for banning pornography as one of the worst social ills of our time. So I don't think it's that at all. Like, it's, I think there's so much more going on that's worse than pornography. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I really don't care what you watch. Right. Do you think? That's what I mean. It's, it's so hypocritical. You constantly say that you're the party that wants smaller government, but everything that you push is big government input. That sounds like some socialist stuff. Right. right well, like, we're going to go in people's homes and take out all of their porn. I don't think that's socialism, but I think that's like you're trying to transpose your religious beliefs on everybody, but you believe in separation of church and state. Like, stay in your own lane, please. If you don't want to watch porn, you don't want to, you want to ban certain sex acts, things like that, like, then you don't do them. Don't. Yeah, I don't really care about the Yeah. Do. Why are you so obsessed with this? I only care if it starts to affect me. Yeah. Like, if I'm walking down the street and I just can't. see people like, yeah, like, 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 no, can you, hello? Right. Somebody come in here, somebody. Yeah, so, uh, whatever.